for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins on the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Having trouble winning games in Madden 23? Yeah. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys the most common mistakes Madden players make that cost you games. See ya! So if you are doing any of the things that I show you in today's video, I recommend you stop doing them immediately. They are probably to blame. But before I get into the video, as always, if you guys Woo! want to see more videos like this, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, let me know in the comment sections. It really helps out the video and the channel, and I appreciate all the support. Sit your ass down. Other than that, I'm once again going to be using my New Orleans Saints offensive multi-defensive ebooks. So if you guys want to see more money plays from these or any of my ebooks, all you have to do is click the links in the description or the top ten comment to have them sent to the email of your choice for instant download. The first mistake is just being too aggressive in general, which will be a common theme for my opponent today as he decides to start the game off with an onside kick. This is really uncalled for and unnecessary at this point as he has no idea how the game is going to play out and it's also a low percentage play. If you want to win games consistently in Madden, you should focus on doing things that have a higher success rate. He does have an advantage on this play here as he caught me off guard and I'm only in a regular kick return coverage, but I still feel that with no problem return it into field goal range without ever running a play. On offense, I'm still using a run play scheme that I put out from the single back wing stack. I just made a video about this yesterday, so if you guys want to see more from this offense, I once again have links in the description as well as a pop-up on screen at the end of the video so stick around for that on the very first play he's already running a man zero blitz meta which like a lot of these things really only work against inexperienced players me personally i like to treat man zero blitz as a bum detector where i will run it early in the game and if my opponent shows that he can handle it i move on to something else on the second play here i hurry him up and judging by the safety's reactions it looks like he's run committing on just the second play of the game he got it right this time but it's never a good idea to run commit unless you have no other choice as even pass committing at the wrong time can be very costly on the next play, I decide to spread him out with my Saints fork play, and he obviously knows this play as he immediately leaves his tight end in coverage to cover the corner route, which was my first read on the play. So my question is, if he knew where the ball was going to go, why not just change defenders and cover the route that he knows the play is going to go to instead of leaving the tight end wide open for a potential touchdown? A lot of players think that they are locked into the middle linebacker position or the safety position or whatever position it is they play, when in reality it's better to be flexible on defense and move from player to player as you see fit. I typically choose a player that has as little responsibility as possible as it allows me to read and react to whatever I see on the field rather than be stuck to a specific defender which I will show you later in the video. I go back to the run scheme and on first down I still don't get much as it looks like he is run committing once again. A common mistake is that people think that using man zero blitz and being aggressive and run committing means that they'll have better run defense when in reality these defenses are very thin and once you get through that first wave of defenders there's nothing left behind them if the first wave fails. That's why they're called safeties at the end of the day. They're there to prevent big plays from happening but if you're sending them as a first line of defense it rarely ends well. On defense, I'm once again going to be using my dime normal cover two man defense, and I will have links in the description as well as at the end of the video if you guys want to see more about it. This defense is a perfect example of having your safeties as a last line of defense. I'm going to be using a safety on this play, but I typically change my user based off of what I see from my opponent's offense. Since he has three receivers on the left side and only the tight end on the other, I'm going to use the safety on the tight end side, and this is because the tight end isn't fast enough to beat my cornerback and need help from the safety. But I will also use the middle linebacker at times, even the defensive end at times in coverage based off of my opponent's offensive personnel. And now that I have a free defender, I can read and react to what I see as I almost make a play on the ball in the very first play, or at least I was in position to. The one thing that my opponent does do well early is he runs hurry up all game, which is very useful at gaining an advantage, but like most things, only in certain situations. Me personally, I use hurry up whenever I catch my opponent in a bad defense. Like say I come out in a 2-3 tight end set and they're in something too small, a defense that mostly has defensive backs or large holes in the middle of the defensive line or maybe the exact opposite i call play with three to four wide receivers and they come out with something that only has two defensive backs or two cornerbacks on the field but he has no real advantage here as i'm already in my base defense and i match up well against his offensive personnel he is just running this in hopes that i can't keep up with making adjustments which is something once again that only inexperienced players will have a problem with he does have success with this on the first drive as i don't know what type of plays and routes he likes to run but by the time he gets into the red zone you can see the effectiveness is already worn off as i force him into a fourth and goal that he converts with a glitchy stack concept that I'd never seen before. Damn it! Before obviously going for two, which is once again overly aggressive and unnecessary based off of the score, he does once again convert to take the lead, but this is all a tactic that I'm not going to fall for. A lot of people feel like when they play an aggressive player like this that they have to match to keep up. 
but this plays right into his hands and his system, and I'm not gonna let someone else dictate how I play, especially if there's no advantage to me. On the next series though, it looks like it's all going to plan for him as his man zero blitz gets home for a sack, knocking me back into a third and 22. But then on the next play, he is still in man zero blitz, which once again doesn't make any sense as he should have just switched over to a safer defense. Break yourself, fool! <laughs> So I just dial up an easy one play touchdown and he even knows it's coming once again as he tries to use her that route but it is too late which begs the question of why are you using inside the box when I need 22 yards on a third down. The hardest part of playing defense is that you don't know what your opponent is going to do in any given play. But on third and 22 you know that I at least need 22 yards right so start defending that first. Back on defense, he is still in his NASCAR package offense, and I have to be honest, it was a struggle to keep up with all the motions and the changing formations and the flipping of the play and stuff like that, but eventually even all that becomes predictable gotcha, bitch. to take a 21-8 to lead. As I continue to kick extra points, his missing a two-point conversion will help him more than it will help me to make it. Back on defense, since he has mostly been running crossers, I decide it's time to set my coaching adjustments. I usually start with 5 and 25 for my flats, but since he is mostly running crossers and slants, which get open at two different depths, I change my flats to 20 so that I have two different options, since I won't be able to come back to these adjustments often due to him keeping me on the field with his hurry up offense. And now I'm going to start using my cover two safeties in the flats more often to try to stop these routes. He thinks the hurry up is giving him an advantage, but it's actually hurting his own ability to read my defense to find any advantage against the coverage that I'm creating. Nope. He does score on this drive due to a broken tackle, but once again, this is not sustainable over a long period of time. He also makes his second two-point conversion, but he's still down five, which means very little to me as he still needs a touchdown, so what do I care? And now with 14 seconds left, he finally does something smart by kicking it deep to the fullback, but he did kick it a little bit too far, reaching my return man instead, and I guess this is an annoying Madden player day as I take it all the way back to the house. Fuck you! I, on the other hand, though, hit him with a squib kick so that the clock starts running immediately as he backtracks over and over again like he thinks he's a Chibata Mitch or something. Sit your ass down! On the next kickoff, I show him how to fullback kick before we go back to making a million adjustments at light speed as he runs the ball for the only the second time in the game. Balance is important on offense, but the most important thing is to try to remain unpredictable. If you are only passing like this or you become too pass heavy at some point in the game, your opponent can gain a huge advantage simply by pass committing over and over with no consequences, which is exactly what I am doing here. Which provides my defense with better reactions and pass coverage since the cornerbacks know they have to cover right away, as well as a better pass rush as my rushers know they have to go straight for the quarterback and they don't bite on any play actions. He does eventually get inside the 10 yard line once again but that is the point of playing bend but don't break defense as it's okay to allow yards as long as you don't allow points. I said earlier that defense is all about trying to get your opponent into predictable situations whether that's third and 22 or second and goal because now I know that I only have to defend a 10 yard space making defense that much easier as we can now do a lot of underneath coverage adjustments gotcha, bitch. and on the next play since there's no over the top left to gain we get an easy interception. Back on offense, we're playing a different type of clock game as instead of a non-stop hurry up, we are just taking our time and taking the air out of the ball, which is a much better option. Some players literally run clock from the start of the game as they want to limit their opponent's offensive possessions as clock really decides who wins or loses, especially in my situation. He gets me into a fourth down and four, which I decide to go for. Usually this is something that I would say to not do based on my lead and field position, but since he is running the same cover zero with the safety 15 yards off the ball, I know that I just need to make a simple out route adjustment to get an easy first down. And this is what I meant by his hurry up hurting his offense, as you need to take time and look at the defense to find the advantages unless you already know where the advantage is. I get a lot more than the five yards needed though, as AJ Brown is like a running back with the ball in his hands. up three scores I see that he is under center so I switch to the man zero blitz for the first time all game. Not because I rely on it like my opponent though, I make the conscious decision based on what I see from my opponent's offense since he is under center with a slow quarterback making the chances of the blitz getting home a lot higher. <laughs> 
On the next play, he's under center again, but I decide to defend the 19 yards. Gotcha, bitch! Only to get a user lurk before he rage quits to end the game. See ya! So, that's, that's the video. If you guys want to see more videos like this, as always, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, or let me know in the comment section. Other than that, I have more videos popping up about the offense and defense that I was running throughout this game. So, if you guys want to see more, just click the links as I'm sure it'll help with your game. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.